Good evening, Malpitas. I'm your 2022 board president, Kelly Yip Chuan. Welcome to this meeting of the Malpitas Unified School District Board of Education. We appreciate your attendance and the participation in our education proceedings, which align with the guidelines set forth by the Ralph M. Brown Act for opening meetings. Tune into our hybrid style board meetings online on either Zoom or YouTube or in person inside our boardroom here at Randall Elementary Languages School. Public comments can be made while you are logged into Zoom or if you are in person. YouTube, however, is a listen-only option. If you are unable to do either of these, please visit our written public, public comments webpage for instructions on how to submit your written comment. For our virtual audience, you will see the instructions for public comment on your screen. Our communication specialists will briefly go over them. For our in-person audience, please go to the podium you are called on. Instructions for both are also listed on each agenda. There are copies available at the back table. One public comment per person is allowed for each item. Our communication specialist will take it from here. Uh, thank you, President Yip Chuan. And yes, as you see on your screen for our virtual audience, uh, you must be registered on Zoom to be able to make a public comment. Uh, once you are there, you'll see a hand icon by your name to indicate your request. Recording in like progress. to make a public comment. Um, we, we will call names in the order they are received. Once your name is called, we'll enable your audio. You'll take yourself off mute, and you'll have two minutes to talk when it is your turn. We ask that you please be patient. The board president will call on any public comment at the appropriate time. For our in-person audience here at Randall World Languages School, there are green cards on the table um, in the back of the seats there. If you'd like to make a public comment, please fill it out. Hand it over to me, and I'll relay it over to the board president. Hey, members of the public may address the board on any subject that does not appear on tonight's agenda. However, provisions of the Brown Act, Government Code 54954.2a and point three preclude any action. As an unagendized item, no response is required from the board or district staff, and no action can be taken. However, the board may instruct the superintendent to agendize the item for a future meeting. Please note that the Brown Act Government Code Section 54954.3 prohibits members of the board in commenting or engaging in discussion during the public comment portion of the agenda, except when seeking clarification on a point made by the speaker, provide a reference to staff members for factual information, or request a staff member to report back to the board on any matter at a subsequent meeting. We do have special accommodations for our Board of Education meetings. If you do have any and uh, need some assistance, please do contact the superintendent's office at least two business days in advance and we'll see what we can do. Our meetings are broadcast live on both Zoom and YouTube and are recorded and available on our website, www.musd.org. Live transcription is available on the Zoom platform um, you would click on the closed captioning icon and the transcription will appear on your screen. Lastly, if there are any additional documents that were not attached to the agenda, those are all disclosable public doc documents and uh, ready upon request. That's it for me. Back to you, President Yip Chuan. Thank you very much, Scott. And we are ready to call this meeting to order. Um, since all of our members are not um, it, here, can you do the roll call uh, for us, please? Certainly, President Yip Chuan. Okay. Um, board member Sai? Uh, present. Board member Lien? Here. Board clerk No. Here. Board Vice President? Here. Here. And Board President Yip Chuan? Here. And our student board reps, uh, we have, uh, let's see, um, Ariana Rocha from Cal Hill. Okay. Mira Bakta from Middle College High School. Here. And Nikita Sharma from Milpitas High School. Here. Okay, everybody accounted for. Thank you very much. And now we're uh, moving on to item three. Uh, President Yep Schwan, uh, to follow the Brown Act, we do need to point out that uh, Trustee Sai is meeting remotely and his
participation is from the Hyatt House as noted on the agenda. Thank you very much, Superintendent. Okay, um, is there a motion to review and approve the open session agenda? Motion to approve. Uh, did you want me to go ahead? Okay, uh, sorry, we wanted to request one change to the reports. L&D would like to move um, its report to first and business services report to second. Say that one more time. We wanted to, in the report section, um, we would like to move the L&D report on summer programs to be the first report and then the business services report will be the second report. Just switching the order. I'd like to make a motion to in the rec from the report section to remove the L&D summer report to first instead of second. Uh, okay, not remove, but uh, move, yeah, move, move it up. to the move it up. Yes. Right. <coughs> second. So we have a motion and we have a second. Uh, wait, let's go for a roll call vote. Roll call vote, board member Sai. Aye. Board member Leanne? Yes. Board clerk Nero? Yes. Board VP Norwood? Yes. And board president Yip Chuan? Yes. Unanimously approved. Wonderful. Okay, we're moving on to uh, flag salute. We have the uh, Melpitas High School in JROTC. Could you please come up and lead us in the flag? Good evening, Good evening ladies and gentlemen. My name is Cadet Mendoza, and accompanying me today is Cadet Nguyen. Please rise and join us in the flag salute. Please remove all hats and hoods and place your right hands over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and you may be seated. Thank you very much, um, Lopitas High School in JRTC, for your service, and also thank you to uh, Lieutenant Jackson for um, your leadership here. Okay, we're moving on to um, public from the uh, comments from the public. Do we have any public comments at this time? Let's go with the virtual first. Uh, we have no hands raised at this time. Okay, we do have two green cards up here, and the first one I have is Amin Fasal uh, from MCEE. Would you uh, please come up? Good evening, board members and staff. Um, my name is Amin Fazal, and I'm here to remind the MUSD staff that our annual grant is currently open for staff to participate, and that includes our district office staff. So please take advantage. It's gonna, uh, we're gonna stop taking application by September 30th. So just wanna make sure it's a $5,000 grant and we would like more people to participate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, the next person we have is Tina Lau. She's uh, representing herself. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Um, so yep, so my name is Tina Lau and I'm a parent at Weller Elementary. I think Weller is a wonderful school and the teachers and staff care so much about the kids. But the nutrition at the school is quite poor. I'm pretty sure we all know what we should and shouldn't be eating, but it's really difficult to make good choices when there are so many unhealthy yet delicious foods around us. The most effective way to eat healthy is to develop healthy habits, of course, but then also to avoid having unhealthy options that constrain our willpower. Um, we know we now have a better understanding of the impact foods can have on our bodies and also on our brains. According to a couple of new peer-reviewed studies, eating ultra-processed foods like hot dogs and pizza can lead to cognitive decline in memory and executive function. It's also been linked to cardiovascular disease, depression, dementia, and cancer. According to a report by the World Health Organization, eating processed meats like deli meats and corn dogs can increase the risk of colorectal cancer. And in fact, the WHO puts those foods in the same category as asbestos and cigarettes. If we don't give cigarettes to our kids, why are we giving them corn dogs? 
And so this is something I feel very strongly about, and I, I know my time is limited. I also don't know what the inner workings of the school district is like. I don't know what opportunities there are, what obstacles there are for us to provide better nutrition uh, to our kids. There are so many competing factors to deal with, I understand that. In addition to nutrition, there's budget, logistics, food waste, child's, uh, children's preferences, and I'm also aware this has probably been discussed before, but I think it's so important that it needs to be brought up again and again and again. And I actually have two asks tonight. I'll try to talk quick. The first is, can we initiate a task force of some kind to develop a roadmap so that we can improve the nutrition in our schools? I understand that takes time, but let's start now to plan out how can we reach that objective. So the second ask is, are there any low-hanging fruit that we can pick now? Chocolate milk at lunch, for example, is something that can be removed from the menu and still have strong positive benefits um, to the nutrition of our children. So. Um, Again, sorry, I'm out of time. I uh, didn't realize it was two minutes. I planned for three. But um, please, I know you can't speak on this, but I would really like to see this brought up in future meetings. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. And uh, I know um, our uh, nutritious uh, person is on maternity leave, but if the superintendent can connect uh, with either Sandy or her, her team mm -hmm. to, so that we can uh, revisit the nutrition programs here. Yep. Thank you very much. We will do that, President Yipshon. And thank you, Ms. Lau. If you could give us your, did she give us a card? Okay, good. Terrific. Thank you. We'll be thank in you. touch. Okay. MUSD strategic goals. Build a degree that engages parents, staff, and community partners in supporting student success. Improve communication system for better outreach to parents, students, and staff. Develop educational pathways that allow students to apply their passion in learning for their future careers. Focus services and support systems to ensure that all students are engaged in their learning and are making social, emotional, and academic gains. Identify creative student-focused strategies to accommodate enrollment growth and ensure healthy learning environments. Okay, item seven, superintendent support. Thank you. I would like to first recognize some of our students who have done community service. Oh, thank you. You know exactly what I was looking for. All right, so if I could have our board and cabinet uh, come forward so that we could take pictures with, our uh, with those that we are recognizing tonight. And first, I'd like to recognize three of our, our students at Spengler Elementary who throughout the summer worked to sell old toys and books to raise funds for Spengler. And they ended up raising, uh, I think it was $97, or was it? When you come up, you could tell us exactly how much you raised. And I know that uh, Principal uh, Joe Hall and Assistant Principal Flores worked with you on what you wanted to do with the money in form of a donation to Spangler. And what you've done is establish for others what it means to be a leader and to provide service to your community. So I would like to invite, and I'm also going to ask you to correct me on your names, Shivangesh Roy. Gugan Sudar Vanan. Ashithya Yadam. And can you tell us how much money you raised? I think it was around $79. I had the numbers reversed. <laughs> um, we live like $70. Parents' donation is $70. So like $140. Wonderful. So your parents matched what you raised. That's fantastic. Thank you. All right. I'm going to match your parents. OK. Yeah, they did 
Thank you so much. And if we could have your parents come up with you. Could we have our parents come up and join us? And thank you, parents, for instilling uh, such uh, examples for your children uh, that they would initiate such a great honorable thing to do for their school community. And I thank you each for being role models for them. So thank you. <laughs> Next, I'd like to recognize a young man who is an Eagle Scout, and he took time to research the products and, uh, and the schematics for creating lunch tables at Milpitas High School. And I'd like to recognize Arush Arora. And Arush. Arush. All right, Arush, would you mind telling us about your project? Yeah, so uh, my project was building uh, two benches at Milpitas High School. Like, it's near the front if you go in, like, the front parking lot. And, yeah, so we got the materials from Home Depot. We built it on a Saturday, and I had a couple of my Eagles, uh, sorry, my couple of my scouts come and help. And we built the benches, we painted them, and then we all, and then we varnished the top and, you know, imprinted the MHS, like, on top. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have several organizations to recognize for uh, their great contribution to our educators who directly support a classroom. The Great Mall, and I believe they are online is Ms. Lynn Rice, the executive director of the Great Mall yeah. Online? Yes, yes, I'm okay. here. Terrific. So we would like to recognize you for getting this, initiating this wonderful opportunity for our educators and supporting the $500 Great Mall Classroom Makeover event for our educators and contributing five of those gift certificates. And I'd also like to ask our Rotarians uh, to come up and be recognized, our uh, co-president, John Ag, and president-elect, Paul Ellis, if you would please come up. <laughs> and
and our Rotarians uh, sponsored seven, so that's $3,500. And if I could also ask our Milpitas Community Education Endowment President and CEO and Vice President, Swati, uh, Amin, and Rob, if you could please come up. And they sponsored five certificates for a total of $2,500. And additionally, I would like to invite our Kuanian leaders. We have Ron Lind, if you could come up and be recognized for Kiwanis' sponsorship of five certificates at $2,500. And I also see Ms. Norma Morales. <laughs> so we'll first take a picture with all of our sponsors and then we'll announce the winners. And now to announce the winners. <laughs> so at the Great Mall, Alicia Salgado was pulled from the drawing. And Alicia Salgado is one of our teacher leaders at Zanker. I thought I saw her here tonight. There she is. And uh, Executive Director Jahari, would you mind giving her a certificate when she comes up? If you could stay up here for a picture. And while she's doing that, I also see Leona, Leonel Briones, who is a teacher at Burnett and is also a recipient. <laughs> and I see Wendy Lundeen, who is a TK teacher from Rose and also a LEAF. And I see Ms. Terry Augustine, who is uh, Cal Hills teacher as well as our MUSD Educate Everywhere engineering teacher. Oh, you even found a, a, I mean, you're even sharing with us something that your kids are doing. Uh, I don't see, oh. oh, thank you. And Miranda Leon Guerrero from Milpitas High School, is that you? Okay, Andrew, we'll take care of it. What? <laughs> Where? Oh, Julie Frost. <laughs> and I might add, uh, Julie, it was you, right, who created the not how to wear your mask last year? Yeah. <laughs> it was a great video. Um, you can catch it on YouTube, I think. And is there any other teacher who was aware? Okay, and Mar Mariana from? Mariela. <laughs> Mariela Davalu from CDC. And then I'll run through the others who aren't here but who also uh, are the recipients. Vivian Sun, Khan Nguyen, Jennifer Bick, Carla Santiago, uh, Santiaguilo, Nicole Perkins, Nadie Nadie, Amy Stanley, Victoria Salcedo, and actually, yeah, Victoria Salcedo, Barbara Nitter, uh, Principal in England, would you mind accepting hers for her? Uh, Miranda Leon Guerrero, and I see Assistant Principal has, oh, there you are, has accepted for her. <laughs> and and we also have our middle college high school, Michael Makatange, and I don't, okay. Oh, you're online, great. Uh, from adult ed, we have Hong Yan Zhang. And from post-secondary, we have Renee Espedia. And so we'll take a picture, and just so everybody knows, uh, we will be doing a story on each of you about how you use the $500.
and Executive Director Lynn Rice, since you are the initiator of this wonderful opportunity, would you like to say a few words? Uh, I think she dropped off, actually. Okay. Well, we will definitely catch her in our uh, story that we do as a follow-up. And thank you again to our Rotarians, our Kiwanians, our MCEE, Milpitas Education, Community Education Endowment, and Great Mall for supporting our educators in this way. And that, that concludes our recognitions for tonight. Next, I'd like to do the State of the District update. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you. This year, for each of our State of the District updates, I will just do one point of reference as far as how we are continuing to drive through the COVID endemic. And here you can see that the, according to the Centers for Disease Control, the County of Santa Clara is in the green. We are low transmission rate. And if you look, you can see that our numbers as far as staff and students who had COVID since I last gave a report has doubled. Thankfully, however, cases are mild. You'll also see that we have handed out additional COVID tests, almost 60,000, and every two weeks we will send home to staff and also to students 14,500 test kits. And this is because our families are now our number one partners in doing surveillance testing on COVID. And so we thank you all for that. You may have heard recently in the news or have seen some of the updates from our Santa Clara County Office of uh, Education as well as the Public Health Department that a new vaccine is available and we here in Milpitas Unified will be having a vaccine clinic on October 25th. So watch for more information about that. Here's a snapshot of our numbers. I'm not going to go into detail on all of them because our CBO, Wendy Zhang, will be highlighting those in her report later. I do, however, want to point out that since 2016, our district collectively has either applied for grants or received donations amounting to $52 million. And in this last year alone, as I reported at the last board meeting, we have amassed $825,000 in grants. And those are grants that our staff has applied for and uh, received. Currently, we are working with a number of universities in the area. We are part of the K-16 Bay Area Collaborative, which includes universities, California State Universities, community colleges, and K-12 districts from the Monterey area through Hayward and San Francisco. Our particular group is the subcommittee of the Silicon Valley 
K-16 Collaborative. Together, collectively, we are working to apply for a grant that will be between 15 to 20 million dollars. There are two phases to the grant. The first is an application for a planning grant, which is what we're currently working on. And then after the planning grant, then we will have a year to work on the implementation grant. So the idea behind this grant is to develop workforce pathways through education. And guess what? That fits very well with strategic goal number three, which is about building pathways for learners. And strategic goal number five, which is about making sure we are doing creative strategies in order to enhance or further develop the learning environment. And here you see one of our students, Denise, from the MUSD Middle College High School, who today was working with people from San Jose State, San Jose Evergreen Community College District, Chabot Community College District, Eastside Union High School District, and also Milpitas Unified School District. And our planning grant is going to be focusing on three pathways, engineering, education, and health sciences. So we look forward to giving you updates on where we are as the year progresses, and very excited about the potential for bringing in additional funding to support our strategic goals around pathways and creative strategies for learning environments. And that concludes my update for tonight. Thank you, Superintendent. <clears throat> so item number eight, Superintendent's Executive Cabinet reports you and your team. <laughs> Thank you. I would like to invite our co-principals of the Randall World Languages School, Ms. Claudia Cadenas and Ms. Kristen Prolo. Uh, buenas noches. Um, we're thrilled um, to be able to show you tonight how strategic uh, goal number four looks like in just the first five weeks here at Randall World Languages School. We like to think outside the box in our creativity and how we support our multilingual learners. So to start, in front of you, you have the very first official harvest from our growing garden. You probably smelled it when you walked in. There are various herbs and maybe even a veggie in there for you to enjoy. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to wait about another two years for the fruit salad that's currently growing. You can't bring your fruit yet. Um, you can see, um, Scott, you got pictures for me? I moved too fast, sorry. Gotta back it up with pictures here. Um, in the pictures, you can see one of the volunteer events down uh, in the bottom left corner. The garden is about a third done, believe it or not, um, but we are already having uh, classes participate in learning outside. Um, even our littlest TKers were out there today exploring um, hands-on science uh, in our garden. Um, but to think that it's only a third done is amazing. Um, so if you need a Zen moment, please walk out there. Um, in this set of pictures, you also have pictures of our amazing students you saw performing last week for Forclorico. It is really hard to follow that up this week. Um, our Paleta Fiesta had 14 different organizations, groups on site ranging from our amazing Los Dichos parents um, that you see in that corner picture with some of our kiddos, um, to adult ed, to coding club, um, and others, um, all before school started here on our campus. Um, also pictured our students experiencing our PBIS rodeo in the front office and learning what supports we can provide in the office other than band-aids and ice packs and principal's visits. Um, the rodeo visited all of the important stops on our campuses so that our students know exactly where to go um, when they have needs regardless of that. And my amazing partner. Buenas noches. As a way to service our families and educate them on how to better support our emerging bilinguals, we just help, can you go to the next one please? Thank you. We uh, just held a TK uh, third, a two-way bilingual immersion meeting. Um, our families, parents, and guardians were able to ask questions and clarify how our students progressively learn English and Spanish in the dual immersion setting. At the same time, it provided another opportunity for them to provide community feedback about the addition of the third language through the Thought Cloud Exchange. And if you haven't done, please do so because we're requesting feedback from all the community. 
This year, our family, student, and staff are partnering up to support our sixth graders to go to science camp, and you can see a flyer there that was recently passed. They have brainstormed ideas on how to fundraise this field trip, and they pre-sold tickets for tacos to go tomorrow during their, um, that are going to be served during their science camp and informational meeting here in this building. Uh, we also were able to to um, get some donations from, from our community. Uh, our Milpitas community supported uh, Randall's students by backpack donations that were delivered to our students on August 19th by the Milpitas Community Educational Endowment that was previously here before this meeting, yeah. And finally, we are going to invite you to uh, the rising of uh, the Mexican flag that is gonna be taking place this um, Friday the 17th, our wonderful students from the, that you already know, the um, Folklorico Las Estrellitas de Randall are going to be performing and it's a very important um, event for our community as it is the first time that the Mexican <coughs> flag is gonna be raised at the um, city hall. So thank you so much for your attention. Did you say Friday the 17th? My bad, Friday the 16th. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. And we will start here with our CBO, Wendy Zhang. Thank you, good evening everyone. This past week was National Payroll Week. Did you know that our payroll team processed about 1,100 paychecks in the amount of $10 million each month? Tonight, I would like to acknowledge our amazing payroll and the benefit specialists. Wing Dao, Sherry Ames, Marilyn Williams, and our newest part-time specialist, Alicia Aldama. Thank you for all your hard work and the dedication. We appreciate all that you do for MUSD. And thank you. Next Wednesday is our bond oversight committee meeting, and we're going to do an in-person meeting at Meadows uh, New Elementary School. We'll start with a tour. If you're interested, you, you are interested to know our bond project updates, and you are welcome to attend. The meeting will start at six o'clock. That all concludes my report for tonight. Thank you. And next we have Executive Directors of Learning and Development, Mary Jude Dorpinghouse and Preeti Jahari. Good, good evening. Um, as we work on key initiatives across the district in our Learning and Development Department, staff have focused on two key areas explicitly under academics, social, emotional, and behavioral outcomes. And this includes supporting district-wide professional learning. More specifically, we've had key topics since the last board meeting which included inclusion including uh, co-teaching at uh, Milpitas High School and Russell staff also it's included um, iReady uh, with elementary staff induction and support for new hires teachers and interns both from preschool through the post-secondary level later this week we'll be providing classified training for our behavior intervention technicians for our paraeducators and our transition assistance on supporting uh, least restrictive environment and helping kids to be in those least restrictive environment and inclusion. Additionally, later this week, we'll also be having uh, Yvonne Sigamora will be doing incorporating the uh, English learner development standards through all subject content. Also, uh, we are looking for teacher leaders interested in broadening and sustaining district and student outcomes by participating in our MTSS or multi-tiered systems and support in a social emotional behavior or district writing curriculum committees. 
These committees are an excellent opportunity to collaborate with colleagues across the district to have shared leadership and experience to build a common understanding that will strengthen our systematic approach to instructional practices and support. In addition, these committees aim to develop consistent and culturally responsive approaches to ensure our students receive a quality, equitable education where they feel seen, valued, and belong. If you're interested, please respond to the email sent yesterday to all teachers. I will pass this on to Executive Director Joe Hart. Thank you. This summer and fall, we've been preparing for our comprehensive coordinated early intervening services equity summit that will take place at the end of September. To support this conversation, we have compiled extensive quantitative data as well as coordinated 20 plus empathy interviews and 10 plus focus groups with students, family members, teachers, site leaders, district leaders, and support staff. At the end of the month, we will have family members, teachers, elementary site leaders, district leaders, and the Culture of We Equity team members coming together to make sense of all of these inputs and help us focus on de determining two to three root causes for the disproportionality in our district. The goal of this time together will be to name and unpack the success gaps as well as their possible root causes. The collaboration with educational partners will inform the development of our CSACE 2020 plan, which will be brought to our board later this fall before its submission to the state. And lastly, we wanted to also share that we are in the process of setting up an additional in-person event to discuss the uh, addition of a third language in the Randall Foreign Language, or not Foreign Language, a Language Immersion Program. And so please be on the lookout for more information about this also from Coordinator Yvonne Sugimura. Thank you. And our Assistant Soup of Human Relations, Jonathan Brunson. Thank you, Superintendent Jordan. Um, I just want to say, you know, thank you. We've been in school for about a month, and, and um, we have three large groups of people that serve our, our community in our classrooms and around the district. I want to begin with our classified staff. We have about 50 different classifications, and each and every one of you make a difference uh, behind the scenes, in front, and supporting our students and their learning. I want to thank our certificated staff. You two show up every day, teachers go to sleep at night, wake up in the morning, thinking about uh, what can we do to make learning relevant, uh, kind, heartfelt, and supportive, and also rigorous, right? And um, we have the people that we call our school psychologists and nurses and BITs and, and speech therapists that do the, uh, the work that helps our students that need that extra support. And last but not least, our excited administrators and district team. Uh, each and every day, they support the sites, they support their students, and. I want to thank our parents and community for always sending us your very best students to our schools and we do our very best to try to put the best people in front of them on a day-to-day -day basis so with that we just want to say thank you here's to a terrific school year uh, we have a lot of work to ahead of us but as i visit sites i see the smiles i see the joy i see the rigor i see the care and i also see some of the heartbreak because of the efforts that everybody's putting in and um, we just want to say thank you. And uh, we appreciate our staff and the people that um, serve this community. And that'll end my report. Thank you. Thank you, executive team, for the uh, dates. Uh, we're going to move on to um, item number nine, the board group agreements. The board group agreements are provided for the board's ready reference as a reminder of our conduct as elected official. Per bylaw 9001, admitted on November 26, 2019, board members and the superintendent agrees to, we'll start with Vice President Norwood and end with Student Rep Ariana. Keep learning, keep learning and achievement for all students as the primary focus. Um, ask questions for our own understanding. Be open, honest with each other. No surprises includes unapproved communications with law enforcement, news media, regional elected official on behalf of the district and our board. Be aware that our behavior in the community reflects on us as a team. Communicate proactively with each other about topics, questions, and challenges in open session and in advance of public board meetings in compliance with the Brown Act.
Thank you very much. Sorry, Ariana, I didn't mean to catch you by surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I just want us to be inclusive here. <laughs> so item number 10 is board communication request. This part of the agenda provides school board members the opportunity to report on their activities as elected uh, representatives. School school board members may request the placement of items in future board agenda, relay information from the community or request information from the staff. The student board representative reports on school and student activities. Reports are limited to 90 seconds. So let's start with the uh, student reps um, online first and then we'll go. Okay, uh, let's see, we've got uh, student board rep Mira Bakta of the Middle College High School. Go right ahead, Mira, with your report. Hi, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi, school board and various community members present here today. As I mentioned previously, we are having our back to school night tomorrow at 6 p.m. Myself and our principal, Ms. Scott, are looking forward to welcoming families to meet our teachers, discussing current college classes, and each student being able to review their future graduation plans with their family. Speaking of our college classes, they have started, and we are in our third week of college classes as of right now. As you progress, we open up opportunities for our students to receive additional support for our our college level math classes through peer tutoring. Just today, we had the opportunity to attend a K-16 collaborative meeting, like you mentioned earlier, on our campus, where two of our students were invited by Ms. Jordan and Ms. Johari to attend. We wanted to thank them both for allowing our students the opportunity to share and for valuing student voices. In our leadership program, we have established committees that range from events to legislation to yearbook, which is upped engagement in our student government. As of next week, we are also expecting to start our recruitment at MHS for current students, uh, sorry, current juniors uh, to join next year. Uh, in the coming weeks, uh, we expect a WASC visit because of our addition of 12th grade, though we are already WASC accredited. And to end on an accomplishment, all of our MMCHS courses are now A through G approved by the UC board. I hope you all have a nice evening. Uh, thank you, Student Board Rep Bakta. Uh, we're going to move on to our new Milpitas High School uh, Student Board Rep, Nikita Sharma. Go right ahead, Nikita. I believe you're still on mute, Nikita. Can everyone hear me? There you go. Hi. Um, well, my name is Nikita Sharma. I'm a current senior, and this is my first year being the school board rep for Milpitas High School. Um, one main reason I wanted to do this was I think it's very important to be a student voice in matters of the district, which do affect students. And I think this is an amazing opportunity for me. Um, and yeah, um, so now onto my report about what Milpitas High School ASB has been doing so far. During the first day of school, we had a welcome splash and we had a spirit week just to kind of get the school year started on a positive note. On the last week of August, we had Cloud Rush where students come out and sign up for clubs. We had a record number of signups for our 90 plus clubs during probably one of the hottest weeks, but turnout was fantastic. And as the club officer myself, I noticed that participation had significantly increased, which is fantastic. Last week, we had our freshman tailgate and class socials just to get the classes more united in time for homecoming, which on that topic, it'll, it will be during the second week of October and our current theme is Greek mythology. We're looking to just have an entirely new idea of what homecoming would be this year, including introducing gender neutral royalty, which is something I'm looking forward to. And lastly, we're getting started for our Jack Emery prep, where we'll be gathering canned foods and money to donate to the Milpitas Food Pantry soon. Thank you. Thank you, student board rep Sharma. And um, our final student board rep is in person at the dais uh, from Cal Hills. Go right ahead, Ariana Rocha. Hello, my name is Ariana Rochin. I am from Calvary's Hills High School. I'm the new representative, school representative, and I am a junior, and I've been attending Calvary's Hills since second semester of sophomore year. I really appreciate this opportunity of being a part of the school board meetings, and we recently <coughs> completed the progress reports last week, and sorry. I'm kind of nervous, but okay. Dual enrollment, four students are enrolled up into SJCC classes. SVC 
CTE. Two students are enrolled currently in career technology education classes. And the credit recovery classes through adult ed have started from 22 students who are enrolled, including myself, and can complete 20 credits through this class using the Ingenuity program. The Calaveras Hills High School Back to School Night is Thursday, September 15th at 5.30 p.m. Staff are excited to welcome the families with food and visit their students' classrooms. Engineering, Calaveras Hills High School continues to offer two engineering classes. This year, Calaveras Hills will have its first ever robotics team compete in a robotics competition in Santa Clara County. The first competition is in November. Stay tuned. And the construction site at Calaveras Hills, the students and staff are dealing with the construction site and the noise throughout the day. It's challenging, but we are getting through it and are excited to have a new school being built for us. Thank you. Thank you, Ariana. So we're moving on to uh, Trustee Sai. Hello. Um, good evening, everyone. This is school board member Michael Tsai. Um, I attended a lot of events since uh, the last board meeting. I'll keep it brief. Um, I went to uh, the Poly elected officials panel um, where I learned uh, more about protecting myself from uh, the harassment and bullying uh, I get as an elected official. Uh, number two, I met with Bob Johnson and talked about uh, strategies for school safety and community safety. Uh, number three, I went to the Santa Clara County School Boards Association meeting on Zoom. And uh, most recently, I, I had a great time celebrating the Lantern Festival the other day at uh, Milpitas City Hall, and I did some uh, painting on silk, which was really fun. Happy Lantern Festival, everyone. Thank you. May we have uh, Trustee Lin? Thank you, President Yip Chuan. Um, good evening, community members. Um, I attended the back to school night. Um, I attended the, uh, is the Church of Christ. So I would like to thank Brother Eduardo B. Manalo and Brother um, Guserio P. Santos IV with Iglesia Ni Cristo for launching the Care for Humanity, and we received a donation check for our schools. Um, thanks for the generosity and uh, for including MUSD as the recipient. Uh, it was also the 108th anniversary, so congratulations. Um, last but not least, I attended the Lantern Festival hosted by the Milpitas Recreation and Community Services. It was a very, very nice event, and I'm looking forward to the Lantern Festival for all the coming years. That's my report. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, now, uh, Board Clerk, no? Thank you, Madam President. So um, I attended the CBI Back to School Night. It was a really wonderful event to really see our families from the primary and secondary um, um, schools to really engage and learn about the special education programs um, that were offered and get to hear about experiences from other families in our district. Uh, thank you, Mary Jude, and, and your team uh, for really putting that together because it was just a wonderful day and night uh, for the families to get together. Uh, I also attended uh, the Rose Back to School Night and also the uh, Milpitas High School Back to School Night. Uh, on both those campuses, it was just a renewed sense of energy on the campus and really just to see the parents, the students, the, the staff uh, really just fully engaged and deep dive um, coming back to the campus fully. Also, I attended the Milpitas uh, High School football game where I got to see our Trojans win their first game, but along that, got to see our amazing marching band. Um, really do a two minute snippet, wasn't long enough, uh, but it really shows how much time and dedication they put together, as well as the cheer squad. So if you haven't been to a previous um, home game, please come out, there's a little bit of everything for everyone there. And that concludes my report. Thank you, thank you very much for that. Vice President Norwood. Thank you, Madam President. Um, uh, early Earlier this month, I led a convening for school district campus safety uh, with the American Leadership Forum and the superintendent of schools uh, and also Superintendent Jordan and other uh, regional district school leaders. 
I attended the Lantern Festival as well in the Milpitas High School uh, back to school night and the back to school at Zanker Elementary School. That concludes my report. Thank you very much. And as for me, my uh, reports, I attended the uh, chamber meeting. I attended the uh, city MUSD school collaborative meeting. Um, I visited Burnett, Kurtner, Russell with Trustee Han Lian, and I attended the Milpitas, Milpitas Historical Society uh, annual picnic. Um, also attended the Lantern Festival and attended back to school night at Milpitas High School, Russell and Rancho. Okay, and that uh, concludes, I believe, all of our reports. And now we are moving on to the national page. <laughs> it's uh, number 11 to right learning now. development. Thank you very much. We'll move on to item 11, which is reports. Um, the first one is business services. Uh, um, we, we moved it. We oh, we do. I'm sorry. All right, thank you. Um, so this evening, I'm excited to introduce uh, members of the L&D Learning and Development Team, as well as district lead, um, school site leaders who led our summer programming as part of the Extended Learning Opportunities Program, the ELOP grant, MUSD prioritized supplemental instruction and supports for students, including targeted support for students who have been, who are identified as low income students, English language learners, foster homeless youth, students with disabilities, students who have disengaged from school, as well as students who were identified um, by their teachers and by our internal assessments is not performing at grade level. This summer, we ran several different credit recovery and intervention programs across grade levels, and they included both in-person and hybrid programming. To talk more about this and introduce our leaders of the summer school program is Director Raquel Kosanoki. Good evening, my name is Raquel Kosanoki, Director of Elementary Education, and with me are members from L&D, um, exec, um, EL coordinator Ivan Sugimura back there and Stacy Lillard, our special ed coordinators. Uh, I just wanted to recognize them because they work behind the scenes to put this program together. We also have joining us virtually is our secondary director, uh, Marissa Koidis. Um, behind me are some fabulous site administrators who are here to share some highlights of our summer program. Um, do you have the slide on? No. So to begin, I'd like to just point out the impact of student enrollment in our summer programs from 2019. Uh, if you look at the bars in front of you on your screen, you'll notice that to, uh, this past summer, we had 1,524 general ed and special ed students from preschool to post-secondary enrolled in our programs. It was a 65% increase from last summer. I'd like to pass it on to Marissa Koide, who will be speaking to, to slide two. Hello, everybody. Um, I hope you guys can hear me well. I'm having a hard time hearing virtually, so can I just get a thumbs up from someone that you guys can hear me okay? All right, thank you. <laughs> so for our sum summer program successes, um, we have a few to share and our summer admin principals will be sharing those. Um, but uh, just a general overview, wanted to share that 88% of our attendees, uh, our seniors who attended our credit recovery program did graduate um, during the summer. We do have a couple more students who are still working towards that degree. And so we are hoping to have a follow-up up, um, ceremony in, in a few months. And also we had 53% enrollment increase from 2021 summer program to last year, to this summer. Um, and really encouraging because we did allow high school students the opportunity to recover 20 credits this summer, which is something we have not done in the past. Um, 1,045 more credits were recovered um, as um, in, in comparison to last summer. 
Um, so now I'm going to turn it over to our summer school admin who will be sharing highlights on specific uh, grade level spans and programming. Good evening. My name is Anastasia Herspinas. I was the summer school co-principal with um, wonderful Mrs. Nicole Klein behind me. Uh, so we uh, were co-principals of the elementary and the high school programs this summer. Um, good evening to our Milpitas community and Superintendent Jordan, Assistant Superintendent Jonathan Brunson, uh, cab Executive Cabinet and Board. The Love for Literacy program that was hosted at Marshall Pomeroy Elementary School this past summer had an enrollment of 218 students in grades K through 3. If I could draw your attention to the bar graph on the left hand side of the screen, we can see evidence of growth in foundational literacy skills, which are uh, noted in the blue bars, and numeracy skills, which are your pink bars, across grade levels for the Love for Literacy program. Marshall Pomeroy Elementary School also hosted the Extended School Year program this summer that provides 20 days of access to social opportunities and IEP goal support to prevent skill regression for all grade levels. This summer program was comprised of 79 K through third grade students that were eligible for extended school year special education services. The students participated in engaging in physical activities that aligned with their individual education plans. Those students who received speech language or occupational therapy services during the school year continued to receive them throughout the summer program. All the students in the program were exposed to and participated in social emotional learning activities to support our students in identifying their emotions, developing empathy, increasing self-control, and managing stress while also allowing our students to build relationships and interpersonal skills that can serve them in school and beyond. Thank you. Hi. My name is Andrew Din. I was the summer school administrator at Thomas Russell Middle School, in which we serviced grades four to eighth and multiple programs. So starting from the largest program would be our project-based learning. Uh, this is in which students, uh, sorry, teachers would develop projects and engage real life skills uh, in which they would teach the students and then the students would display through some kind of presentation. If you take a look at the data presented to you on the slide, you'll make note that the blue was the pre-assessment skills which the teachers assessed and finally red in which they assessed at the end of the program. As a quick example, one of our fourth grade classes did a entrepreneurship one where all the students made little groups and little uh, innovations and learned vocabulary to stock markets and points and they developed little products and traded with each other before finally presenting how they did to their shareholders. In this way, they're they are engaging multiple skills. Our other programs would be Summit, in which summits, um, they would make up their, their uh, focus areas, and this would engage schools at Randall, Russell, and Pomeroy. For our 18 students, and Weller, sorry, for our 18 students who attended the Summer Extend Learning, there were 38 history focus areas past 29 English focus areas, eight math focus areas, and seven science focus areas. For our program called Girl Start, STEM is a, is a field which we don't have a lot of female representation. So the, the goal of Girl Start was to have girls aged 8 to 10 engage in many STEM skills with this outside program. The 100% the, uh, attendance and 18 students came to the Russell campus in which they learned various STEM uh, lesson plans from outside sources. Finally, our ESY students, we had 63 students work towards targeted IP goals such as reading and speaking. We also had mental health counselors which visited each of the classes every week to engage skills such as self-regulation, relationship building, and self-esteem building. Thank you. Okay, good evening. I guess I'm the shortest admin, well, got Raquel here, but uh, second shortest. I am the shortest summer administrator this year. My name is Nicole Klein, and uh, I worked in tandem with uh, Ms. Hersafinas, um, coordinating the elementary program and the high school program. 
And so I love numbers rather than bar graphs. Uh, so I'm gonna kinda walk you through um, the work that we did this summer in terms of the high school summer program. The credit recovery was much larger uh, than typical summers. We gave students a larger opportunity. We doubled their opportunity to recover credits this year. And um, we utilized the program Edgenuity, which is also being incorporated uh, in various capacities in the secondary sector this school year. Uh, and so it allowed students to really demonstrate their mastery. It wasn't, this summer wasn't about how many hours is your butt in the seat. It was how can you demonstrate your knowledge, prove that you have now deemed yourself proficient in this content area, and go and enjoy your summer. If you're not ready to go and enjoy your summer, what class do you want to take next? And so this was truly the opportunity that our Milpitas students really thrived in to really um, just given opportunity after opportunity after opportunity, and the students were just grabbing at these these opportunities to recover as many credits as they could. So they could recover up to 20 credits, which is two years of credit for if they took English classes or any of the same content, but they could mix it up. They could take one semester of something they failed or something they got a D in if they're looking to be UC eligible, things like that. We also increased our counselor. Um, every year we talk about how we want to have our counselors, our academic counselors more easily accessible. So we were able to continue that this year as well and so we had a counselor at least one counselor sometimes two on site every day during the high school program which was that additional friendly touch point uh, they some of them know me miss hersefinas is is newer to them but those counselors they know them you see Jonathan Payne out there every day connecting with all of his students from Cal Hills that he would see and he would have those relationships with them and connect with them as just as Jenna Everkue and Adrian Hernandez would do each day. So having that opportunity to really um, make the summer program something meaningful and relational for the students is exactly what this summer did. Thinking about our English learner courses, every year we talk about how our ELs are falling behind and how are we going to catch them up. If they're being placed in ELD classes during the year, then they're not taking English classes and how are we gonna make them college eligible and how are we gonna do all this? Well, this year we did it. We were able to offer hybrid classes where they were able to earn English one credit at a rate where they were receiving highly scaffolded instruction to meet their EL needs. So these students walked away with a full year of English credit versus any other summer previously, they would only get a half a year credit for that same length of time. So it was highly targeted, highly scaffolded, ensuring that the students are ready to be successful in ELD and English too in the next, or in this current school year. Thinking about our bridge program, it kind of tag teams with um, what Andrew, Mr. Din was just sharing about the middle school program. It was, again, highly scaffolded. It focused a lot on relationship building, taking students that just promoted from eighth grade, moving into ninth grade, and what is it like navigating the middle school, taking some project-based learning opportunities, and really working with our mental health counselors to uh, push into those classrooms and really work on that relational building and just kind of getting them ready to have a successful first step into high school. Um, ESY, piggybacking on what Ms. Hersafinas and Mr. Din shared, it was a lot about working on their actual IEP goals and actually getting data on that, having parents receive feedback on how did their students perform over the summer. And um, I just want to highlight our CBI teachers are so amazing. Um, I saw, well, I always see a lot of field trips, but this year it was like field trips and opportunities to the max, seeing the students going out there excited into the community almost every day this summer, and it was always something new. So it was taking these skills that they were learning through the year, and it was a true continuation of what was occurring 
uh, during this summer and really an application of that skill set um, to really set the students up for success. And then next slide. Sorry, I'm chatty tonight because I've been quiet for a month. Uh, newcomer program. So our newcomer program, I mentioned it a bit earlier, but it was a way to create pathways for our ELs and making sure that we close this gap. Um, we had programs in grades, in all the grade spans, uh, but we were able to use selected curriculums. So it was really targeted this year. It wasn't just finding a bunch of experts, which we do have a lot of great experts in the Milpitas community, in our teachers and our paraprofessionals, but really finding something that is more of a box set that we could then embed some of our strength from our teachers into it. So we took these amazing teachers that we have in the district, we gave them a curriculum to use, and they took their greatness and em embellished and made these products that they were creating each and every day this summer into something that was really going to target the needs of our learners. Um, so they focused a lot on listening, oral production, explicit instruction. We were making sure that we were focusing on the four linguistic domains, and we were really making sure that we would develop their abilities to explore liter literacy works. Um, and we had a lot of successes, and I hope to see it continue um, because I'm very passionate about seeing our ELs really set up for success and giving them the same opportunities um, that our native English speakers or students that are reclassified early prior to high school are given. And I think this summer we really made that step in the right direction. So it was nice to see. That's all I got. Questions? Um, Nicole, you know I've always been a super fan of summer school. And I've yes. always been a super fan of us being consistent with staff uh, for this reason. I've never seen you so excited about a summer school presentation uh, in the several years that you've been involved. So please share with me, what was the difference pre, not, not including COVID, right? Let's kind of... Yeah. That we're well, blocking right. that one out. Right. <laughs> what was the difference this year in comparison to the years past when we talked about what summer school could really do to impact students? It was not about seat time. I honestly think that was it for me. Um, I, I think maybe I have that bias coming in from Pomeroy with Summit Learning and students demonstrating their mastery by taking a content assessment and moving on. Um, but for students, their, their parents are making them go to summer school at the high school level, whether or not they want to go on their own. Their parents are forcing them to, to go because they want those credits. They want to see their child graduate. Yes, the kids want to graduate as well, um, but we all know it's the parent given that final push. And so when you can dangle in front of a kid that as soon as you finish and you demonstrate that you know this material, you don't have to come anymore. That was all they needed. And plus, they got some otter pops along the way. Um, but it was wonderful to see their genuine excitement, their genuine uh, willingness to sit down, hunker down, and do that work. You could, we could pull up the reports on Edgenuity to see when they were actually working. Uh, and you would see them working into the wee hours of the morning because you would see huge gains in, um, in work progress at midnight, 2 a.m., because they knew that as soon as they finished, they got their summer back. Um, and you could see students never had the opportunity to take four <laughs> classes over the summer. Yes, we weren't able to offer everything that we wanted to offer, but we offered so much this year and we saw so much success and you saw students really working to demonstrate their knowledge. And that's something that we didn't necessarily see. We saw students who came to summer school in previous years. This year, we saw students demonstrating knowledge. And 
for me, that's, that's kind of what we're here for. We're here to teach them. It's nice to see them, get to know them. Those are those added perks. But our main role is to make sure that they are walking away to be equipped to be successful in their future. And part of that is making sure that they're able to demonstrate that knowledge. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So what I heard is a lot of implementation of programs that are across the district. You know, the, the love for literacy, the Girl Start Newcomer Program, the Bridge Program, a lot of that added to the overall success of the summer program. Uh, I appreciate the presentation and the data put together. What I would challenge is to put that forward and apply for awards. Um, this comes school. I know that in our district we have the Hoffman Awards. That uh, this is a prime uh, example that could be submitted uh, for that application process and review. Uh, I would love to see awards attached to these programs and, and continued success for that. So thank you so much. Thank you. Are there any other uh, comments or questions? I just also wanted to say thank you again uh, to, to the team here as well as uh, Director Koide who's online. Um, the summer is a labor of love, right? It takes a lot of hours of preparation during the school year. So they were wearing two hats uh, starting from I think February onwards and then into, uh, into the end of July, right? And then we come back around right at the beginning of August. So I really appreciate that. And, um, what we're really trying to do is create an incubator model in summer school where we are piloting um, new ideas and I think the mastery based approach and the connections to what works well with Summit as well as um, project based learning where we're really focusing on the real world application while building up those foundational skills in math and literacy um, has shown real success with our students. So thank you for the, the time and effort and the, the professional development that you also provided um, all of our adults that were supporting these programs. And I would just like to ask, uh, so you changed the expectations for the student learners. What was different for the teacher learners in this? Any of you? <laughs> I, I can speak for the high school credit recovery class, if you guys can hear me. Mm -hmm. Okay. For the high school rec uh, credit recovery courses this year, we were really explicit in making sure that the teachers were not only, um, you know, sharing content, but also building connections like was already stated, but really coaching the students. So taking the time to meet individually or in small groups with students um, to make sure they were on track to finish. And I think that also played a huge role in the number of credits we saw um, completed this summer. So I taught in the Love for Literacy program. I taught kinders going to first grade. A couple of the things I really appreciated this year was one, we had campus monitors who came in and watched the kids during lunch. So it really gave the teachers a chance for a little break, but then also a chance for us to collaborate during that time as well. So I know all of the teachers um, that I spoke with, all my colleagues this summer really appreciated that at the elementary level. And um, also the PD time we had at the beginning or at the end of our school year, beginning of the summer program, which really allowed us to work with our grade level span. Well. Thank you. And so these are things that, um, that I would imagine somebody has written down to repeat and build on for next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Nicole, you're right. It was the parents who, who pushed for their kids, you know? I, I wanted my kids out of the house. It's my summer. Yep. But no, thank you for having these <laughs> programs. Great. great, thank you. Okay, uh, we're finished with that business services. Wow, it's hard to follow uh, that nice presentation. Now let's talk about our, uh, some numbers. And so tonight, um, let me share my screen first. Um, I'm excited to share with the board that we officially closed our book 
of 2021-22 school year. And each year after we close our book and for developer fee program, we're required to um, do a public report. And in this report, there are four criteria that here we listed here. So we, we should uh, disclose a description of the fees collected the amount of the fees and the beginning and the ending balance of the account and also uh, the amount of the fee collected and also the interest earned. Here is the summary of our develop fee, developer fee report for the 21-22 school year. We use fund 250 to record this uh, collection separately. So we started with the beginning balance as of July 1, 2021, with six million. And throughout the year, our actual interest earning was 50,000. And we collected 573,000 developer fees. Most of the those fees, about 470,000, is from the developer at the Maple Meadows area. And our total expenditures is about 168,000. And with that, we have an ending fund balance of 6.5 million to carry forward to the 22-23 school year. And currently we charge about 4.79 per square foot for residential and 78 cents for commercial. Pro uh, so this is a summary of our developer fee report for the year 21-22. And we just asked the board to accept this report. Hi, Wendy. Uh, this question comes up a lot in the community. Mm -hmm. Who actually sets the developer fee? Oh, the dollar amount is the state allocation board. And the, each, er, um, for, because we're at level one, right? Right now, there are three levels, level one fee, level two, and level three. Level three is never being uh, levied. Most of the school districts were under level one. And the, the, school, uh, the state allocation board, every, um, two, every other year, they will uh, set up the base. And then this is the, their fee uh, for uh, this year. Thank you so much for explaining okay. that. Any other questions? Uh, you did have a specific line for the Matos construction um, line. So um, as far as the plans for the developer fees, is it um, earmarked for specific projects? Well, right now, I mean, uh, because we have our bond fund, and uh, most of the projects we can, uh, I mean, uh, from the bond, we will use the bond fund. Mm -hmm. And then you can see here, and for Meadows, um, there are some testing fees and uh, some technology uh, license that we cannot pay out of the bond fund. We will use developer fee to cover for it. And yeah. also in the future, some uh, bond project, like um, if we exhausted all the bond dollars and we still have project going on, and we can use developer fee to fund for that project. Great. That's all the questions I had. Okay, thank you. Okay, if there's no more questions or comments for Wendy, we will move on to um, action items 12. Business services. Yeah, all of those uh, items are started. So I will just continue share my screen. I will just go over one item, one by one. Then, the first item here is to accept our 2021-22 unaudited actuals. And again, we officially closed out our book, and we have um, attached a summary of our financial statements here for you to review. 
And in our background, we listed the difference between our unaudited actuals and the estimate actuals. If you recall, in June, when we asked the board to adopt a budget for this year, we always do the estimate actuals for the current year. The current year now was passed. So after we close the book, the now our ending fund balance in general fund, even though it increased by uh, by over $7 million, but most of this um, increase is due to the program carryovers. Mm -hmm. You can see here, let me move. The legally restricted carryovers, this is from our categorical programs. Most of those programs are the federal state program. And then the three million here is, is, is this is from our general fund. Most of those is from the school side. This is the school side budget, like for example, is there a supplemental grant and the block grant and the fundraising, they did not spend and then they can carry over to this year to spend. And overall, our audit actual uh, is a very, the fund balance in general fund very close to our estimate actual for general fund. That we have about the savings here, it's about over 300,000. And in the attachment here, we have um, a one-time grant expenditure summary here. Since we last year, let me see which, close up this. Okay, here is now one-time grant expenditure summary for the 21-22 year. We started with a carryover from the year before, 2021. And then we received about 6.2 million additions from the state. And then our actual spending last year was 9 million. And we have about 6.4 million to carry over to this year to spend. And you can see most of this is from the ELO grant, the Expanded Learning Opportunity Grant. And we're going to use this fund to cover for um, student extension and interventions and then to provide it extended um, instructions throughout the year. And we also have about 600,000 and that this is the pair of a special ed program. And then from the ESSER, um, the elementary and the secondary school emergency relief grant, this is the, from the federal program and the majority of this carryover will use that to cover for our um, distance learning, um, the VPP, pro, uh, we call virtual academy, or virtual pathway program this year. And we also have our income statement attached here. This income statement has a summary of each fund by revenue and expenditures. And as Cheryl shared in her um, earlier presentation, our total general fund expenditure uh, revenue is 145.5 million last year, while our total expenditures is 144.6 million, and we have 12.6 million uh, ending fund balance in general fund. And we also have um, revenue and expenditures listed for each of the fund here for you to review. And then we also updated our multi-year projection worksheet. And what we updated is this column is called unaudited actuals for 21-22 year. And then we also uh, um, included the changes that I shared with you in August that, uh, to reflect the state budget changes in the current year. But we're going to do a um, more detailed budget study and a budget update for the current year. And then we'll share with the board uh, in December with our first interim major budget update. So the current year projection, we will start working on the projection, the budget projection now through uh, November. And then we'll have a more or detailed information to share, and that will also reflect the changes for the subsequent two years projection. So in this multi-year, basically the update is primarily focused on the unaudited actual column. 
And then here is the standard, um, we call the SACS form. This is the form that we would need to submit to our county and to the state. And the information is just summarized in our income statement and multi-year projection. So tonight we would like to ask the board to accept our 2021-22 and audit actual. Okay, is there a motion? Just one quick question for Wendy. So this um, relief fund, it is restricted just for whatever you listed on there as ELO and stuff. Is there an expiration date on the fund? You mean the ESSER 1 and ESSER 2, those are federal programs? Yes. And the most of their expiration is uh, 2024, June 30th. Okay, so moving so, on, carry on to 20, we can 22 carry, to 2023, we're good. Yes, okay. yeah. Most likely our goal is to spend it uh, down this year, 22-23. Okay, But we can, till, we can have it till 2024. Thank you. Okay, let's, let's check to see if there's any uh, public comments first. None? Okay. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. There's a motion. Second. Second. And now let's go for a discussion if there are any questions or comments. Okay, seeing none, we have a motion and a second on the table. Let's go for a roll call vote. Okay. okay. Roll call vote. Board member Sai. That's going to be an aye. Board member Leanne? Yes. Board clerk you now? Yes. Board vice president Norwood? Yes. And board president Yip Chuan? Yes. Passes unanimous. Thank you, Scott. Moving on to item tw uh, 12. I, was that one? Uh, B. B. Yeah. Um, uh, to adopt our resolution 2023.10 and the GAN limit. And this is also a routine item. Each year after we close the book, we will need, uh, first we will need to open the public hearing. Motion to open the public hearing. I second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for a, we need to do the uh, roll call vote. Roll call vote to open the public hearing. Board member Sai. Aye. Board member Leanne. Yes. Board clerk No. Yes. Board vice president Norwood. Yes. And board president Yip Chuan. Yes. Passes 5-0. Okay, we're gonna. Go public hearing public is now hearing. open. Okay, the time is up. Um, if there is no other, uh, can we get a motion to close the public hearing? Move to close the public hearing. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, is there a roll call vote? Board member Sai. Aye. Board member Leanne? Yes. Board clerk No. Yes. Board vice president Norwood? Yes. Board president Yip Chuan? Yes. Unanimous, 5-0. Next one. Okay. Yes. So we need now, to adopt the resolution. Now. Yeah, we needed to adopt the resolution. And um, if you're interested to know why this is called GAN limit, this resolution uh, listed the history. Basically, it's named after uh, the legislator Paul GAN. So, so that's why they use his name to call this uh, GAN limit. The purpose of this GAN limit, basically for the government entity, we need to set up 
um, a limit for our spending. And so in, after we close out the book and we will disclose what is our um, total spending uh, last year and, um, and also what is our adopted uh, spending for the coming year. And there we are, our spending is within our limit. And on the second page, basically here it shows there's nothing to adjust. So tonight we're asking the board to adopt this resolution and accept our GAN limit. Thank you, Wendy. Is there a motion to adopt resolution 2023.10? Motion to adopt resolution. Oh. Oh, that's, uh, uh, here. You started. Motion to adopt. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, let's go for a roll call vote. If there's uh, no comments. Okay. Board member Sai? Aye. Board member Leanne? Yes. Board clerk No. Yes. Board vice president Norwood? Yes. And board president Yip Chuan? Yes. Passes unanimous. Okay. Moving on to item C. Okay, item C is um, to adopt the resolution 2023.3 and to designate a certain general fund and a special reserve fund as committed fund balance. And it, under the background here, I listed some history with this uh, reserve cap. If you recall, back in 2014, there was a legislation um, in place uh, to keep, to cap the district's reserve. And because um, most of the experts uh, um, felt that this regulation is not a um, uh, prudent, fiscally responsive uh, resolution, I mean regulation. So after that, and there are many advocacy or ad, um, to try to either um, to have further defined the reserve cap on school districts. And then in 2017, trying to move, there was this uh, Senate Bill 751 um, was introduced and um, uh, put into law, basically capped the school district, the reserve level at 10% with assigned and unassigned ending fund balance of our general fund and also the reserve fund. So for us, that is our fund um, 010 and the special reserve fund 170. So that means the combined fund balance in both funds cannot be 10%. Mm -hmm. So for 10% for us, it's about 14.4 million. So our total reserve cannot be over 14.4 million starting this 22-23 school year. And tonight by asking the board to adopt this resolution, we would like to commit the certain ending fund balance from both funds so that way we are in compliance with this uh, capital reserve cap, uh, the, uh, the ending fund balance reserve cap regulation. As I shared earlier um, in my uh, report, each month our payroll alone is about $10 million. With other operational costs, so each year, we, I mean each month, we need a cash flow at least $12 million or $13 million. So this 10% reserve cap, $14.4 million, it will just get us over by one month. If um, if at the end, um, at the time the situation, the condition that the when the state cannot pay us on time, and we have to use our own reserves to cover for operations, so the ten percent reserve cap basically is not going to get us very far. And by commit some of those funds we listed here, for example, the three point one million is the program carryovers that is already committed to. School school side, that the school will spend them. And also in our strategic reserve fund, we have set aside a two million to cover for the future stirs and the purse cost increase. 
And we also have um, a designated 1.7 million that was from the redevelopment agency, the one-time legal settlement. And uh, we, the board, uh, designated the, uh, this 1.7 million on uh, spending on materials and equipment for uh, students' learning and assessment. And we also have a 10.2 million uh, reserve now. And this will help us to mitigate for future deficit spending. And also, any, if we do have a um, decline in enrollment in future, and this will help us to cover for that uh, operational cost. So tonight, we're asking the board uh, to adopt this uh, resolution, and so then we can commit those funds. Is there a motion? Motion to adopt the resolution. 2023.3 designate certain general and special reserve funds uh, committee fund balance. Is there a second? I second. Okay, any discussions or comments? None? Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Let's go for a roll call vote. Board member Sai? Aye. Aye. Board member Leanne? Yes. Board clerk No. Yes. Board vice president Norwood? Yes. And Board President Yip Chuan. Yes. Passes unanimous. All righty. Moving on to item D. Okay. Item D. Wendy, this is, is item D, Wendy, is item D the topic that we've been talking about in terms of um, access to additional dollars for our healthy air, for our plumbing and electric efficiency program? Yes. yes program. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm very happy to share with the board that. Um, we submitted our application. If you recall, at the, um, this past board meeting, I asked the board to award a contract to a consultant to do an assessment. Mm -hmm. And we received a notification from the state that we are entitled up to 1.9 million for our HBSC upgrade. But um, we will, um, um, our final amount will determine based on the assessment. And by adopting this resolution, uh, will basically let the state know that the uh, Milpitas Unified is um, uh, willing, is going to participate in this grant. That is the purpose of this resolution. Motion to adopt 20, motion to adopt 2023.11 authorization to participate in the California Schools Healthy Air Plumbing and Efficiency Program. Is there a second? Second that. Any and discussions? congratulations, Wendy. Thank you. Wendy, I do have one question. Um, sure. Would, would this can also we see if there's any public comments, okay. and then we can go for no. There's like no public comments at this time. Okay. Uh, would some of these funds go to um, installing new H HVAC in certain areas of our district? For example, the high schools. Some I've heard some classrooms don't actually have AC. Well, it depends on the assessment. Uh, the, the current assessment is for the two middle schools and the high school. So, and then after we finish the assessment and we'll submit that with, uh, to the state, and then this, uh, the, we will know what are the eligible expenditures we can do. So basically, there are some um, criteria that we have to gotcha. follow. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. But also one thing i like to share that uh, uh, because in our current bond program, we also allocated some funds to upgrade our HVAC system. So if this grant cannot help to upgrade, and then we can use some bond dollars, or vice versa. Uh, we, if the state later on allow us to um, upgrade our current system, or maybe even purchase or install new system, and then this can also help in our bond program. So that means we can save some budget from mm -hmm. HVAC and to use for other purposes. Mm -hmm. So this is a really a win-win for, for both programs. No way. That's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, if there's no comments or questions, um, let's go. We have a motion and a second. Roll call vote. Board member Sai. Aye. Board member Leanne. Yes. Aye. Board Clerk No. Yes. Board Vice President Norwood. Yes. And Board President Yip Chuan. Yes. Passes unanimous. Thank you very much, Scott. Okay, now we're moving on to um, to human relations. 
Thank you, President Yip Xuan. Um, before you this evening, we uh, need to uh, hold a public hearing on uh, MTA's proposal for reopeners of the collective bargaining uh, agreement. It gives me great pleasure to introduce this on behalf of our president of the Melpitas Teachers Association, Diana Orlando. Article 23.5, completion and duration of the uh, agreement, reopener negotiations for the 2023 collective bargaining agreement between Melpitas Teachers Association and their school district that either party may request to reopen negotiations for the 22-23 school year on Article 5, which is compensation. So last board meeting we submitted um, this so that um, this article on behalf of MTA so that these uh, this article could be um, advertised so that a public hearing could be held this evening. And so um, it also allows uh, Article 5 to be open as well as Article 18. So accordance with board policy 4143.1 public notice, the collective bargaining agreement, we um, are here to um, ask the board to conduct that public hearing um, on behalf of MTA and the proposal on compensation to the district. Motion to conduct a public hearing on Sunshine proposal with Milpitas Teachers Association, initial proposal for reopeners of collecting bargaining agreement to the Milpitas Unified School District. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, let's, if there's no comments or questions, let's go for a roll call vote. Roll call vote. Board member Sai. Aye. Board clerk or board member yes. Leon. Board clerk No. Yes. Board vice president Norwood. Yes. And board president Yip Chuan. Yes. Passes unanimous. Open hearing. I need a motion now to close the hearing. Motion to close public hearing. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, Scott? Roll call vote. Board member Sai. Aye. Board member Leon? Yes. Board clerk Noon? Yes. Board VP Norwood? Yes. Board president Yip Chuan? Yes. Passes unanimous. Okay. Board now accepts the article from MTA to be negotiated with the district. Thank you, uh, trustees. We need to do this process again, but from the district's uh, proposal to MTA to also reopen negotiations on Article 5, I will bypass reading all of the uh, uh, board policy as well as the reopener uh, because I just stated that on behalf of MTA. So uh, at this time, I'm asking the trustees to conduct a public hearing to sunshine the district's proposal on reopeners on Article 5 compensation. Yeah, move to uh, open the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll, roll call. Oh, okay. Board member Sai. Aye. Board member Leanne. Aye. Yes. Board clerk Noon. Yes. Board vice president Norwood. Yes. And board president Yip Chuan. Yes. Pa passes unanimous. Open hearing.
Motion to close the public hearing. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Roll call vote. Board member Sai. Aye. Board member Leanne. Yes. Board clerk No. Yes. Board vice president Norwood. Yes. Board president Yip Chuan. Yes. Passes unanimous. The board accepts the article from the district to be negotiated with MTA. I can go on to item C if you'd like now. Sure. You bet. All right, at this time, um, we'd like to, uh, on behalf of uh, Suzette Bromagen and the California School Employees Association, they too are now ready to begin negotiations and would like to propose uh, the following articles on a successor agreement, uh, which means that the entire contract is open. Uh, CSCA Chapter 281 would like to uh, open the following articles, Article 10, uh, I'm Sorry, Article 7 on work year, work week, and overtime. Article 10, compensation. Article 11, vacation leaves. Article 12, holidays. Article 13, leaves. Article 20, layoffs. 27, safety and property. Article 29, reclassification. Article 31, reopening of negotiations, as well as Appendix A, B, C, D. Uh, CSC has an interest in negotiating the op uh, updates for the appendix language and squaring of the salary schedule. In accordance to board policy 4143, a public notice must be done and to have a hearing at the next board meeting to uh, give the public an opportunity to comment on any of the articles that CSCA is proposing to negotiate uh, for this upcoming year. So at this time, we'd like uh, to have the board have a motion and accept or receive, I'm sorry, the California School Employees uh, Chapter 281's request for negotiations with Milpitas Unified School District. Move to accept. There's a motion to accept. Is there a second? Second. Okay, if there's no comments, let's go for a roll call vote. Board member Sai. Aye. Board member Leanne? Yes. Board clerk No. Yes. Board VP Norwood? Yes. And board president Yip Chuan? Yes. Passes 5-0. On to item D. This is the time where the district is also going to ask the board to sunshine the following articles that represent the district's um, interests in negotiations with our California School Employee Association. With that said, the district would like to open uh, the following articles, which is Article 7, Work Year, Work Week and Overtime, Article 8, Community Volunteers, Article 10, Compensation, Article 11, Vacation Leave, Article 12, Holidays, Article 13, Leaves, Article 14, Labor Management Committee, uh, Article 16, Disciplinary Action Procedure, Article 17, Performance Review, Article 18, Transfer Promotions, Article 20, Layoffs, and Article 24, Organizational Rights. Um, both parties uh, do agree that reserve the right to open any other articles with this, um, but we are asking the board to then uh, sunshine these articles at our next uh, board meeting uh, with CSCA. Jonathan you, Jonathan, you said to sunshine these articles for our next board meeting? No, no, do, 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 we'll have, do what we just did with uh, the Teachers Association, well, Sunshine, uh, I'll have a public hearing, I'm sorry. I said Sunshine, I should have said public hearing. Thank you. Um, motion to ex uh, accept the Sunshine proposal, Mopedis Unified School District, initial proposal for successor contract to California School Employees Association. the public hearing next week next yeah, week next yeah. the public re hearing next <laughs> meeting I'm calling it. So, okay I'll just roll with that we're good is there a second second okay let's go for a roll call vote there's no comments or questions okay board member Sai. aye board member Leanne yes Board Clerk No. Yes. Board VP Norwood. Yes. And Board President of Yes. Passes unanimous. 5 0. Thank you, trustees, and thank you, CSC, and we look forward to a uh, wonderful time working together on these articles. Thank you, Jonathan. Okay, we're moving on to item three, Superintendent's Office. 
Thank you, President Yip Shuan. I would like to begin with not, um, item A, resolution 2023.6, celebrating Indian Independence Day. Mr. Forstner, would you please uh, roll the video? Twenty twenty three point six. Whereas Indian Independence Day uh, is a national ho holiday celebrated annually on August fifteenth, which marks the end of the British rule in nineteen forty seven and the establishment of a free and independent Indian nation. And whereas this day also marks the anniversary of the partition of the subcontinent into two countries, India and Pakistan, which it occurred at the, at midnight on August fourteenth to fifteenth. On 19, in 1947, whereas the Indian independence movement began during World War I was, and was led by Mohandas K. Gandhi, who advocated for a peaceful and nonviolent end to British rule. Whereas the revolt of 1857 was the first large-scale rebellion against British rule and inspired the future generation to fight for the independence of India with the formation of the East India Association in 1867 by Dadabhai Naroji. The Indian National Association in 1876 by Surendranath Banerjee and the Indian National Congress in 1885. And whereas the works of reformers like Swami Vivekananda, Ravindranath Tagore, Vio Chidambaram Pillai, and Subramanya Bharati evoked this sense of nationalism among Indians. And whereas the current flag of India consists of three colors, the saffron stripe stands for courage and sacrifice. The middle white stripe stands for peace and purity and green for faith and fertility. The Ashok Chakra at the center of the flag is an ancient Hindu symbol meaning wheel of law. And whereas in Milpita is a community rich in cultural diversity, more than 7,000 residents are of Indian descent and are part of the fabric of our great city. And now therefore be it resolved that the governing board of Milpita's Unified School District join other communities and school districts in the nation in celebrating the 75th anniversary of India's independence. It has been adopted by the Milpita's Unified School District Board of Education at a meeting held on September 13, 2022 by the following vote. Thank you for that. Is there a motion to adopt? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, there's no questions or comments. Let's go for a roll call vote. Okay, board member Sai. Aye. Board member Leanne. Yes. Board clerk New. Yes. Board VP Norwood. Yes. And board president Yip Chuan. Yes. Adopted unanimous. Thank you, Scott. Moving on to item B. Item B is adopting resolution 2023.7, recognizing September 15th to October 15th as National Latinx Heritage Month. In 1968, President Lyndon Johnson started the observation as Latinx Hispanic Heritage Week. In 1988, President Ronald Reagan expanded the week to a month, enacting it into law on August 17, 1988. And the definition for Latinx used for a person of Latin American origin or descent, a gender neutral term sometimes used in law of Latino or Latina, referencing Latin Americans' culture and their race identity. And Milpitas originated from the word Milpia, derived from the Nahuatl words Mili, defined as agricultural fields and Pan defined as on. And Hi, my name is Yudira. And whereas the city of Milpitas history dates back to the Spanish expeditions of the late 18th century and are honored today with the preservation of Jose Maria Alviso Adobe and Jose Iguera Adobe. And Whereas Milpitas' own city council members, former Vice Mayor Bob Nunez, Vice Mayor Carmen Montano, and Council Member Karina Dominguez, as well as former Police Chief Armando Corpus, our current Acting Chief Jared Hernandez, are making Latinx voices heard and making a change in the world. And whereas the experience of the Latinx community is an important aspect of the United States and Milpitas' rich and diverse culture. Whereas Latinx Heritage Month offers the opportunity to learn of the profound impact of Hispanics throughout history, including civil rights activist Cesar Chavez, Surgeon Macario Garcia, engineer and astronaut Elena Ochoa, film director Alfonso Cuaron, Supreme Court Justice 
de Sonic Sotomayor and Surgeon General Antonia Novello are amongst those who love it Latinx Heritage Month as a national celebration. And whereas Demi Lovato, Jennifer Lopez, Jorge Ramos, Eva Longoria, with their Hispanic roots, have made an impact in the Latinx community. And whereas Roberto Clemente was the first Latinx in professional baseball to reach 3,000 hits, even winning MVP games in 1971 who acted as a politically conscious representative of the Latinx community when professional sports contained very few Hispanics. Whereas Sophie Cruz, who once said, I have the right to protection, I have the right to live with my parents, I have the right to live without fear, I have the right to be happy in front of 5,000 people in 2016 when she was only six years old. And whereas a group of Spaniards, Afro-Latinos, indigenous people, and mestizos traveled to California and founded the city of Los Angeles, which has the country's largest Latinx population and or as the formation of the league of united latin american citizens in 1929 the united farm workers of america in 1968 mendes v Westminster in 1945 the east los angeles walkouts in 1968 the mexican-american legal defense and education fund in 1968 the southwest voter registration education project in 1974 and El Congreso del Pueblo de Habla Española in 1938 are all events, amongst many others, in U.S. history where Hispanics play a central role and Whereas each year, Americans observe National Latinx Heritage Month from September 15th to October 15th by celebrating the histories, cultures, and contributions of American citizens whose ancestors came from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the governing board of the Milpitas Unified School District join other communities and school districts in our nation in celebrating September 15 to October 15 as National Latinx Heritage Month, passed and adopted by the Milpitas Unified School District Board of Education at a meeting held on September 13, 2022, by the following vote. Is there a motion? Motion to adopt the resolution. Second. A motion and a second. Let's go for a roll call vote if there's no comments. Um, as far as the discussion is concerned, Scott, I would love to challenge you that the next time that we're doing resolutions, we have all boys. <laughs> I, I'll take that challenge. Yeah. All, every res for the all boys. <laughs> we'll get it we done for you, Vice you President. In the past. <laughs> Let's be fair now. I think it might come up next. We'll see. And before we go to the next one, I'd like to point out that this Friday at 6 p.m. at the City Plaza, there will be a uh, flag raising in honor of National Hispanic uh, Heritage Month uh, next month. And our Randall dancers will be there to celebrate. Folklorico. Yep. Folklorico, thank you. And Scott, to add to the challenge next time, I, I would love for our students from the Randall School to, you know, be implemented in this too, since it's part of their language and heritage as well too. Will do, definitely. Thank you guys for the suggestions. Mucho gracias, senores. <laughs> okay, and a roll call vote. Uh, board member Sai. Aye. Oh, actually, we do have a hand raised. Did you want to go to that president? Yeah, yes, president. please. Have a comment. Actually, her the hand was put down, so we'll we'll redo the um, the roll call vote, starting again with board member Sai. Aye. Board member Leanne. Yes. Board clerk Gnome. Yes. Uh, board VP Norwood. Yes. And board president Yip Chuan. Yes. Passes unanimous. All righty, let's move on to item C. Okay, item C is to adopt a resolution recognizing uh, American Patriot Day, known as 9-11. Scott. This is the Mopitas Unified School District's resolution 2023.7 honoring first responders and recognizing September 11th as a Patriot Day, a national day of service and remembrance. Whereas on September 11th, 2001, our nation was changed forever by terrorist attacks that killed more than 2,977 people and injured more than 6,000 others. Whereas in response to the attacks in New York City, Washington DC, and Shanksville, Pennsylvania, firefighters, uniformed officers, 
emergency medical technicians, physicians, nurses, military personnel, and other first responders immediately rose to service in the heroic attempt to save the lives of those in danger, more than 400 of whom lost their lives that day. And as in the immediate aftermath of the attacks, thousands of recovery workers, including trades personnel, iron workers, equipment operators, and many others, joined with uniformed officers and military personnel to help search for and recover victims lost in the attacks. Whereas in the days, weeks, and months following the attacks, thousands of people in the United States and others spontaneously volunteered to help support the rescue and recovery efforts, braving both physical and emotional hardship. Whereas many first responder, rescue, and recovery workers Volunteers and survivors of the attack continue to suffer from serious medical illnesses and emotional distress related to the physical and mental trauma of the strategy. Whereas, in 2009, Congress passed and President Barack Obama signed a bipartisan Serve America Act, which established, to the request of the 9-11 community, federal recognition of September 11 as a national day of service and remembrance. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the governing body of Milpitas Unified School District on the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks joins millions of other communities and school districts in commending and honoring the selfless dedication to fellow citizens displayed through the heroic actions of first responders and other individuals in New York, Washington, D.C and Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and recognizing September 11th as a Patriot Day, a National Day of Service and Remembrance, with appropriate and personal expressions of service and reflection, which can include performing good deeds, displaying the United States flag, attending memorial and remembrance services, and engaging in community service or other charitable activities in honor of the people who lost their lives or were injured in the, in the attacks of the September 11, 2001, and in tribute to the people who rose to service to come into the aid of the people in need and in the defense of the United States. Motion to adopt the resolution honoring first responders and recognizing September 11 as Patriots Day and National Day of Service and Remembrance. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments or nothing up there? Okay, so let's go for a roll call vote. Board Member Sai. Aye. Board Member Leanne. Yes. Board Clerk No. Yes. Board VP Norwood. No. Yes. Board President Yip Chuan. Yes. Adopted unanimous. Thank you. Moving on to item D. Item D is to enact AB 361 for an additional 30 days. And in referring to the uh, AB 361 language, which is quoted here, the board may use teleconferencing without complying with the regular teleconferencing requirements of the Brown Act if A, the legislative body holds a meeting during a proclaimed state of emergency and state or local officials have imposed a recommended measures to promote social distancing. B, the legislative body holds a meeting during a proclaimed state of emergency for the purpose of determining by a majority vote whether as a result of the emergency, meeting in person would present eminent risk to the health or safety of attendees. C, the legislative body holds a meeting during a proclaimed state of emergency and has determined by a majority vote pursuant to subparagraph B that as a result of the emergency, meeting in person would present eminent risk to the health or safety of attendees. Recommendation is to consider the factors for extending AB 361 for, uh, for 30 days. Thank you, Superintendent. Are there any uh, public comments out there? Uh, we have no public comments this time. Okay, so let's, uh, is there a, a motion from the board? Uh, I move to accept AB 361. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? All second. 
Okay, we have a motion and a second. Now we're going to a discussion. Are there any um, comments from the board members? Questions? Yeah, I'll just say a comment. Uh, in the regards to AB 361, um, in the past couple of months, there were times where, um, you know, the, I wasn't well enough to, to be here in person. I would still like to connect and be a participant um, in the board meeting. And, and there are times where I didn't have enough time to put the two days notice of my remote location. So uh, for me, I'd be voting in favor of AB 361. Anyone else? I want to, I want to say that men's reasoning is completely sound. Um, I want to make it easier for people to participate and, you know, not risk anybody's health because, you know, it's not just us as board members, right? Because there's the people around us, you know, um, that we are going to be in contact with. So, you know, I'm, I'm about protecting everybody. So I agree with men. Okay. Are there any other comments from the board? If not, let's go for a roll call vote. Okay, roll call vote. Board member Sai. Aye. Board member Leanne? No. Board uh, clerk no? Yes. Board vice president Norwood? No. And board president Yip Chuan? No. Uh, motion fails. Okay. Yeah, I want to say that. Um, um, I'm you know, sorry, sir, board member Tsai. Um, you're trying, I just want to say for the record that wanna, certain people are trying to force uh, me to be in the same room as them, and it's creating a safety risk uh, for myself. And it's I, time I find to, move to consent order. items. Okay, moving on to item 13 consent and, items. Consent items are considered routine and will be acted upon the board in one, one motion. There is no discussion on these items prior to the motion unless members of the board, staff, or public request that specific items be tabled or removed for discussion or corrections. Are there any items that need to be tabled, removed, discussed, or corrected? Okay, if there is none, let's go for a vote. Okay, roll call vote. Board member Sai. Motion. You need a motion no first. Motion. Uh, I, motion to oh, I don't appreciate sorry, my microphone. Is, there a, is there a motion? Motion to approve the consent items in one, you know. We have a motion to approve the consent items. Okay, and then is there a second? Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. If there's uh, no items for discussion in this particular topic, then we will go for a roll call vote. Okay, roll call vote. Board member Sai. Uh, I don't appreciate board members cutting off my microphone for the record, and I'm going to vote yes. If we are um, board in, uh, the Brown Act, is that what it? What the, what the board, board member Leanne? Yes. Board member No? Yes. Uh, board Vice President Norwood? Yes. And Board President Yip Chuan? Yes. Passes 5 0. All right, thank you very much. So we're moving on to item 14, dates of future board meetings. September 27, tentative study session, 5 p.m., tentative closed session at 6 p.m., open session, 7 p.m., hybrid on Zoom, YouTube, and Randall Elementary World Languages School, 1300 Edsel Drive. And October 11th, tentative study session at 5, tentative study uh, closed session at 6, open session at 7, hybrid on Zoom, YouTube, and Randall World, Randall Elementary World Languages uh, School, 1300 Edsel. Item 15, do we have any announcements or reminders? Executive team first. Yes, on Friday, we will have an AIR alumni special tour of uh, MUSD Innovation Campus at 3.30 for those who register. And on Saturday is the AIR alumni reunion and uh, members of the board and cabinet will be there uh, to kick off the next phase of our capital campaign, which is uh, providing bricks that those who are interested can purchase, and the funding goes towards the capital campaign to develop the innovation campus. 
Thank you, Superintendent. Any other uh, executive team member? None, how about board members? This is for um, announcements and reminders only. Okay, seeing none, we will move on to item 16. So before we um, move to adjournment, um, I would like us to do a moment of silence for uh, remembrance of 9-11. Can we uh, do a, a quick silent, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you to those who serve in our fire or police or um, first responders. for first responders. Thank you very much. Um, so we appreciate the, all that you do for us and for our community. Okay, with that, um, is there a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second. Roll call. Roll call vote. Board member Sai. Aye. Board Member Leanne? Yes. Board Clerk No? Yes. Board VB 